This week is Halloween, meaning that today adults across the nation are buying the candy that they will eat themselves before they buy the candy that they will reluctantly give to the neighborhood kids. The beggars! Welcome to Monday. It is October 26, 2015, and this is A Case of the Mondays with Pat and Jules. My name is Pat, and over there is Jules. Hello, Jules. Hi, Pat. How are you? Um, I was going to say awesome, and then we had technical issues, so now I'm a little stressed. Yay, some but... issues. Oh, my gosh. Just, just like what we had last week with you and me. Well, it was mainly you. It was me. And then... I, I, I swear I did work to try to fix it. However... The people that are just listening to the audio podcast will never know uh, the difference because I am a masterful editor. He kind of is. Like <laughs> It's pretty impressive how good he is at editing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have to do a pickup or anything like that. Let's just do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Take two. Cut into the middle of a sentence even. Look at that. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, people are buying candy this week. And it was really funny because I actually wrote that intro last week because I'm like going, it's Halloween. What else is going to be going on? Who cares? Right. It's just all about candy. And then uh, you were out and about today. And what did you do today? I literally texted Pat and said, I am at Walgreens buying Halloween candy. And what a freaking rip F my, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what happened. Like, And I didn't look at the intro that he wrote. I didn't see it. No. Um. But we just I just spent fifty dollars on Halloween candy because we live in this really cool, safe neighborhood, tons of kids. People bring their kids to our neighborhood because it's awesome. Right. And so I was I decided to buy like the industrial big packs of, you know, Walgreens candy. And if you go there like the week before, they have good sales. So it's a good time. So now how many how many um, pieces, I guess, are there? Well, like total. I think I bought about 600 pieces of candy. Holy crap. I did. And we will usually wow. go through all of it. Wow. Yeah. Because wow. we live in one of those newer neighborhoods that all the houses were built. And, the, and it's a good school district. And so a lot of families moved into this neighborhood. Wow. And because there aren't a lot of neighborhoods like this one in the area, people will actually bring their kids from other neighborhoods to this one because they can actually walk around without worrying about, you know, axe murderers and crap. That's so, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We so live, we live in a pretty good neighborhood too. And so I'm I last year we didn't get to um get there was a, the family stuff going on. So we couldn't really get to uh we had to shut it down last yeah. year. We were so excited and then we had family stuff and then we had to shut it down and we're like, oh lights out and all the candy for us last year. <laughs> and this year this year I'm like going, okay, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna try it again. Hopefully there won't be anything in our way, blocking the way or anything like that. And and uh and so we bought a bunch as well. Um and uh one of them so I don't know, how do you how do you buy your candy? Do you just buy like the mass stuff so that you can get it out as much as possible? I mean, obviously with, with that big of a of a uh Halloween in your area you're probably doing that, right? Yeah, what we do, I buy the bags at Walgreens, which are great, which is the assortment of, it's like, some of it's a chocolate assortment, some of it's like the candy, um, like the colored candy assortments, mm -hmm. Starburst, Skittles, um, those kinds of things in different flavors, and I'll buy them in like a 200 bag. Um, and wow. because you just need to have that much in order to be able to do it. And here's the problem, because like, yeah. you put this in the intro, it is so true. I am the chocolate person, mm -hmm. and my husband is the candy, um, the, oh, the the candy, candy the sugar person. guy, the sugar coated yeah. candy stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't like that stuff very much, so okay. I won't eat it. He was at, I swear, he was at Walgreens while we were packing up all the well played mm -hmm. stuff last weekend, and he was at Walgreens. And I said, "Why didn't you buy Halloween candy?" And he goes. I didn't know what to buy that you were going to get mad that I wasn't going to get the right stuff. And I'm like, no, seriously, I'm trying to lose weight for BlizzCon. Don't get stuff that I want to eat. Like, <laughs> buy your stuff. I right. don't need it. Right. Well, I, I, uh, so I was with the, with the wife this weekend, uh, and we were at 
Target, I want to say. Target's um, good. And uh, so we were buying up all the candy, and and there they have this huge Halloween candy section. I mean, yes. they have like aisles of candy, and it's just amazing how much there is. And um, and so we bought a bunch of different stuff. We bought like stuff that. I think I think what we did is we said, okay, we're going to buy stuff that we like because if we get stuck with this, I don't want to just throw stuff away. I want to be able to eat it and get fat and all that kind of good stuff. And and then um, we came home after doing that, and I made a mistake, and that was to try sample uh, one of the candies because I was curious about it, and it is uh, Reese's Pumpkin. Oh, so, dude. That's like my favorite candy ever. It's the chocolate pe- peanut butter. Yeah, it's the peanut. I know this is so amazing. I don't see how anybody could hate this at all. But uh, the Reese's uh, peanut butter pumpkin is just like the Reese's uh, the big thing, right? The the cup peanut yeah. butter cup. Yeah. Except it's not a cup. It's in the shape of a pumpkin in kind of a really weird pumpkin shape, right? But don't hold it, that too long because it's going to melt on you. No, like I'm you're going to eat melty it. figures. I'm going to eat, gonna eat it, it on the show. I don't even care. <laughs> Because this is so good. Mm. Oh, I like it. Mm. Dude, you've mm. been doing a lot of running. You've been doing a lot of working out. You've been helping yourself to be more healthy. And then you open up a bag of that stuff and it's all over. It's all over. And then you just wash it down with a milkshake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Go on to Culver's, mm-hmm. why don't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, and now my throat is covered in chocolate and peanut butter and it's lovely. You're going to oh. smell like this for the entire rest of the show. Mm, maybe. <laughs> mm, mm. I brought a few more, though. I brought a few more down for the show just in case. You couldn't I... share, right? No, well, <laughs> I wish I could. No, I d- actually, I don't wish I could because they're all for me. And already um, the bag is is looking a little sad of these uh, Reese's peanut butter, peanut butter pumpkins. Apparently, um, Core Tempest in the uh, chat room oh. called them a peanut butter poop nugget, if that'll help you stop oh, eating. No, it won't, because I <laughs> love it. It tastes so good. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, there's, I mean, obviously, it's it's um, not great chocolate and not great peanut butter, but when you combine them together, somehow it's magic. Well, they put so much darn sugar in that peanut mm. butter to taste like that, and it they is really addictive. Do. They it's really totally do. addictive. Mm. Mm. I'm still reeling from that. <laughs> on a peanut butter high. Mm, I love it. Uh, <laughs> another thing that I'm reeling about is uh, last week we saw we saw uh, something happen on the internet where actually it was Monday Night Football, wasn't it? Amaze balls. I didn't see it on Monday Night Football because I don't get ESPN because hmm. I've I've uh, dumbed down my my dish uh, s- subscription. You t- you finally did it? Well, I, I've dumbed it down. Okay. By a lot. Okay. I'm I'm almost there. I just need to uh I need to convince the wife. I still need to convince the wife. She's almost there though because we've dumbed down the dish stuff and now she's like not really watching live TV much at all. So it's pretty great. But uh but what did we see on Monday Night Football Jewels? We saw the official full-length Star Wars trailer which we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Um as predicted, it happened while we were in the middle of raid. And so as soon as the internet started to talk about it, we were like, hey, it's break time. <laughs> Just a little 10 minute break. And everybody immediately muted themselves on Mumble so that they didn't <laughs> hear anything. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to say anything. I'm going to scream in my own house and you're not going to hear me nerd scream all over the place. And yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get exactly. It. it was pretty cool. Oh. And then, and then on Thursday, I think it was Thursday or Friday. Um, somebody came out with the Star Wars trailer supercut. Mm-hmm. Now, the supercut is when uh, you take all the different uh, trailers, the different teaser trailers, and then the official trailer, and you uh, combine them all together for this mega trailer, right? That also was very, very cool. I think it changed some things too, because what it because it's been such a break of time between the little teaser trailers, and of course, whoever did them. Had, and did this, this supercut had to figure out where they thought those pieces would fit in. Yeah. If that if they're right, then there's going to be some pretty interesting developments from this. Yeah. And it made more sense to me of what the plot could be. I'm still not sure it's, why there was such a dormancy for the force, though. Uh, right. I have no idea either. Mm-hmm. But we don't see Luke. We don't see him. No. We haven't seen him yet, except for those silly, like, leaked 
photos that are out there on the internet. Right. right. They were bad that made it out there. But yeah, he's definitely in it. We well, he's don't. he's the new Obi Wan. So yes. he's he's <laughs> gonna be he's gonna be the dude in the beard in the desert, just kind of living out there, just kind of doing his own thing. And or maybe he'll be like a combo of Obi Wan and and uh, and uh, Yoda. Mm-hmm. So could be cool. I'm so stoked. Hey, did you wind up buying tickets already for it? No, I, di- I wasn't going to do that because okay. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, when does it come out? December the 18th. December 18th. I think yeah. I'll probably end up going. So that's a, uh, what, Thursday for the midnight I showing? I think it is. Yeah. It's just and- the, yeah. I mean, they, the tickets went on sale on Monday as well when the mm-hmm. trailer came out. So everybody was yeah. just buying them up like and crazy. Killed uh all the internet uh, ticket sales sites forever yeah just like everything crashed it was amazing and yeah. and no but what I, what I think i'm gonna do is i think i'm gonna um go the following week during a weekday mm-hmm. and do like the first showing so like on a wednesday or a thursday go at like 10 a.m and uh yeah and go enjoy and then stay for a second showing and then maybe cool. a third. And then maybe a fourth. And then I'll stay overnight in the bathroom somewhere. And I'll just, I'll just go the next day. You'll be that guy living on scraps of popcorn in the back room. No, <laughs> so the reason, that I, the reason that I don't do first weekends anymore is because of Lord of the Rings 2. So during Lord of the Rings 2... It was very, it was chaotic. It was busy. It was, it was incredibly busy. And I, and I went with, um, my wife and her family, some of her family, and we, uh, got, you know, this row of seats and I'm like going, cool, this is great. And we, and I, there was, there was, uh, it ended up, I was on the end of the family. I wish I had been in the middle, but I, I was on the end and then there was a, an empty chair and then there was a couple and then there was the aisle. Mm Mm-hmm. During, before the movie started, I'm like going, oh, sweet. Is this, is there going to be an empty chair here? Are we going to, am I going to not have to sit next to anybody uh, weird or whatever? This is, this is crazy if this happens, you know, I was like getting really excited about just kind of hanging out and being able to, you know, put my feet wherever and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Didn't happen. <laughs> uh, what ended up happening was literally like. Three seconds after the theater went dark, this dude came and sat in the chair next to me, and he had an odor. Oh, no. That was so horrible. It oh. smelled like he uh, had a cat or several that were angry at him oh, and God. peed all over his clothing. And it was a combination of that and him working at like. I don't know, like a some sort of weird uh, horse rendering plant or, you know, something. To, I mean, it was just horrible, horrible smells. Plus, he was like a three pack a day smoker. Oh, oh. And so it's just the, the, this acidic, horrible scent peeling off of this guy right at me. I had to sit the entire movie with uh, holding my holding my fingers up to my nose so that I so, to try to block the smell. It I've was, had to do that because of perfume. Uh, and and the thing is, there was no switching seats at that point. No. None. All the seats were taken. And I guess I could have gone and complained about the guy, but I mean, what are they going to do? It's not like he's bugging me, uh, you know, physically taunting me or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But his odor was horrible. I mean, well, like, then you the feel worst, like the biggest... The oh. biggest dick about coming out and saying, hey, this guy smells. Can you remove him from the theater? Like, that oh. feels really bad. Oh, man. I should have put my jacket on the seat. That's what I should have done. I know. Well, you'd have to move it. If it was, it was the only seat I left know. in the theater, you would have had to move it. I know. But I would have put it there. <laughs> I know. And, and this is thinking. the thing that worries me, too, because oh. I would have been. I've had cases where there's a woman who sat in front of me who has so heavy perfume that her perfume gave me a migraine. It's- and. I think it actually happened when we mm-hmm. when we went to go see the Avengers Age of Ultron. There was someone in front of us that reeked so badly of perfume oh. that I had to cover my nose. Well, at least oh. that was perfume and not this gross B.O. cat pee horse rendering plant crap that I had to deal with. 
And it's just, oh, it's just, it was so bad. I mean, it was just so bad. Like I was leaning away from the guy, f- fingers trying to plug the scent. And I was just like leaning over to my wife and going, can you smell that? And she goes, uh, maybe a little bit. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> do you want to sit over here, honey? <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, uh, what do we do now? <laughs> I so badly wanted to leave <laughs> on that oh, one. I can't. I can't even imagine. Right. So the so that's why I don't do um uh, first weekends anymore. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, should we kick off the show a little bit? Why don't we do that? Let's do that, and let's uh, kick off with a little bit of this week in history. Ah, yes, this week in history. Uh, okay, so. Uh, 1026, 1881. This is old. Yeah, this is old. We're going back a ways. Uh, that, this is the anniversary of the shootout at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. Ooh. And it was between the, the, uh, Clanton and Earp families. So, and if you've seen the movie, you know, you know what happens. I haven't seen this movie. Apparently it was amazing. There are a couple of different movies on this, I think. So, Mm -hmm. many different movies throughout the years been based on this but uh but doc holiday was there you know it's cool i don't know all right western stuff yes uh 10 28 1919 prohibition began in the u.s with the passage of the national prohibition act by congress it was actually um and the reason that i bring this up is because it was uh written by one of the minnesota one of the representatives from minnesota and i don't oh. I don't remember his name, but I know that he's from Minnesota, and this is why I and I hate him. <laughs> I hate him for doing this. How dare he? Considering how much alcohol in is a, a good part of life. Oh no, it's yeah, it's good. It's uh, yeah, it's all good. This is probably one of those things in America that, that they could wish that they did over again and could have changed the course of history in a better way. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, the, uh, there's still no sales on Sundays. In Minnesota. Really? Yeah. Seriously? I didn't know that. There's still no sale on Sundays. And uh, except for now they have, uh, you know, the different tap rooms. Now that every, like every state has all these different brewers and tap rooms. And that's kind of like the big hipster thing uh, these days. And I love Mm -hmm. it. Don't get me wrong. They can, they can finally sell like growlers on Sunday. On Sundays. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's all you can get as far as like actual beer. So, so are you talking about going to a store and not buying it, or can you go to you can you, you not go to a bar on Sunday? You can go to a bar on Sunday. Okay. You just can't go to a to a store and buy buy booze. Gotcha. Uh, you might be able to buy like some three two beer or something like that from a grocery store, but there are very few of those in Minnesota. I know that it varies state to state. Minnesota is one of those states where mm-hmm. you have where you have uh, separate uh, grocery stores and and booze stores so all the liquor stores are closed on sundays it's interesting because we can sell liquor at our grocery stores here but there's a certain time of day that you can sell them like i think before i think they changed it recently but it like registers would not allow you to buy alcohol before 9 a.m and then at 9 p.m is when they would shut off like you could not couldn't buy them anymore i think it's uh 8 p.m and on the weekdays and then 10 p.m on the weekends so there you go. Gotcha. All right. Uh, also, this week on uh, October 30th, the War of the Worlds radio broadcast. Uh, uh, this is 1938. Uh, it was broadcast to millions of Americans, and everybody freaked out. Orson Welles uh, is the master of this stuff, and yeah, it was just really great. So, and it made uh, an okay movie. Yeah, and people really, really, really did think this was real and panicked an entire nation that oh, yeah. the Martians were invading New Jersey. Yep, yep, pretty cool. Uh, and you were in New Jersey at that time, weren't you? Yeah. Or, I mean, well, I, well I not mean, you, grew up in, you grew up in New Jersey, and that was probably kind of a big thing of the culture around there, too. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I just, I didn't learn about it until I was in high school, but yeah, most definitely. Cool. Uh, and... Uh, on 10 29, 1969, UCLA student Charlie Klein attempts to transmit the text login to a computer at the Stanford Research Institute over the first link on the ARPNET, which was the precursor to the actual internet. So, 
kind of a fascinating week. He only got L.O. before the system crashed. But they got it later. <laughs> they finally the got it. The beginnings of our World Wide Web, the things mm-hmm. that we do these days. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 1960. Uh, 1969. Yep. And in 1984, on uh, this day, I think. Yeah, 1026, on this Monday, uh, the original Terminator was released. So... Happy 31 years, Terminator. Uh, And they finally released Genesis uh, this summer, so uh, that was pretty cool as well. I don't know if you saw the big Arnold versus Arnold fight in that one. I chose not to watch Terminator Genesis. (laughs) A lot of people chose not to watch Terminator Genesis. Yes. It's okay. I chose not to, but uh, this, this day in history was also the birth of Papa Jules. It's his birthday today. Aw, happy birthday. And Uh, also, uh, Weird Al Yankovic, I think, was born a few days ago. Oh, good. I mean, you know, his birthday was a few days ago. So, not not that he was born a few days ago, because that'd be weird. (laughs) But he is Weird Al. (laughs) (laughs) It all kind of makes sense when you turn it around back on itself. Exactly. I don't don't know. All right. Uh, So that I can recoup after that... uh, mismanagement of words uh let's play some music <laughs> let's do it i'm uh, i'm excited by the music you're about so to play. today we have some really awesome music i'm looking so forward to playing all of this stuff uh for you guys and, and it's it's gonna be a lot of fun make sure you listen to both tracks today because they are stellar uh and the and of course all the tracks on today's show i would just let you know they are all done by permission from the artists and so it's really great Thank you very much for letting us uh, play your songs. Now, first up, we're going to listen to Heather LaRose. Now, Heather LaRose is a Winchester and New York uh, City-based artist on the rise. Within the past year, she's played, uh, let's see, Fashion Week, South by Southwest, uh, and all up and down the East Coast. Great. And her debut EP, which is titled Beachside, will be released released later this fall and i think you're gonna like it it's really upbeat stuff and uh this track is is perfect it's called run with me and this is by heather larose and all of the links you'll be able to find all the links in the show notes please make sure to go check out those show notes because uh, you'll see tons of links for uh both artists on today's show uh and we really thank them again for letting us uh, run these again run with me heather larose here we go Change it all.
Run with me. Run with me, Jules. Run with me. <laughs> Uh-oh. You'll never guess what's happening. Did you mute yourself? I muted myself. Hey! <laughs> oh, God. for a second, I thought you lost your sound again. I, I, I was trying to be smart, and I just muted myself, and, you know. I nice heard. Nice yeah. Work. Sorry, I'm on a new setup, and <laughs> I'm trying to make things work the it's, way it should work. It's kind of funny. Don't it's kind of funny, the kind of disaster that has befallen you with sound. But uh, I've got to laugh because otherwise I'll cry. <laughs> right. That was a cool song, though, right? I loved it. She, I'm going to run all day with her. Yep. And again, uh, links are in the show notes. So make sure to, to look at the show notes uh, in the video. It'll be down below and on SoundCloud and uh, on the uh, actual podcast. It'll be in the show notes somewhere. And so you'll be able to check it out. Yes. Um, including her Facebook and her and her uh, SoundCloud account and all that kind of stuff. So it's nice. totally cool. It's very cool stuff. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about news, Jules. Yes. Uh, what's going on? So this first story, which I absolutely <laughs> there, uh, police are looking for a person who decided to send 50 pounds pot, shipping it through, uh, and it landed at the wrong house. Oops. Um, <laughs> Oops. I meant to put like a four instead of the seven. And now, oh, man. I when you were even. trying to fill out that address label, it might have been a good idea to do it sober just yeah. as a, you know, because 50, 50 pounds <laughs> of pot being shipped to a home in Hazlitt, New Jersey is going to prompt some question marks when it arrives and you think, hey, dude, that's not my stash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my stash. I don't know why it was reported in the first place. I mean, damn. That's that's oh, I suppose it's the wrong. It's the wrong uh, person at the wrong house. So they couldn't <laughs> give it to you. You had to sign for it, obviously. You know. The police say that the person who shipped this, this to the recipient is more than welcome to come to police headquarters. The recipient is welcome to come <laughs> claim their loot. Right, Stash. right. It was funny. Um, uh, uh, this is a different story, but uh, kind of the same thing. So the police are asking him to you know, come down and claim it, whereas one guy who was actually uh, found on a store's camera to have been stealing stuff. He was, his picture was posted on like the store's Facebook account and like on the, on the door and stuff like that. And apparently the guy took umbrage with him putting the photo on his store's Facebook account. And he went down to the cops and was asking the store manager not to do that anymore. Like he wanted to complain against the store manager for putting up a picture about his, I it was very confusing, and I think that um, I think that the the criminal uh, was apprehended. I, I believe. I think so. It's I don't know. The best dumb. thing about this this article too is that yeah. there's a photo below it that says "weird news photos deer caught in pumpkin." Yeah. And there's a picture of a deer running with, with a, a pumpkin on its face. Deer with a pumpkin face. Actually, that's kind of a big thing. I mean, like. Animals getting stuck in weird situations and stuff like that. I mean, does that your happens. dog do that? Uh, she has not gotten her face into a pumpkin. No, <laughs> not yet. She is a puppy, though. Anything can happen. I mean, she's a year and a half old. Anything can happen. But we don't actually have a pumpkin this year. So okay. Well, at least you don't have to worry about your deer getting, you know, a no. dog and no faces and pumpkins. And no stuff. faces I, I don't and pumpkins. Know. Is not going to be a thing at our house this year. I don't understand why NBC New York thought that these two things went together, but apparently. Well, if you're reading about pot, you want to see something funny. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see something nice. Oh, yeah. Deer, cotton, pumpkin. That's hilarious. Especially if you're reading about pot. Mm-hmm. It's true. Pat, do you uh, do you like to go vote when it's time to go vote? I usually do, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's there's an election coming up, and I... Don't know if actually, I think it's actually when I'm heading out for BlizzCon that's the actual election day this year. Oh, really? Uh, so I don't think I'm going to get a chance to go vote. Um, but for those of us who like to go vote and like to take a selfie while you're doing that, say, yo, I voted. Oh. Um, <laughs> in Indiana, they had, uh, they had put the kibosh on that. The lawmakers in Indiana said, you are not allowed to take a picture of your ballot and tweet it on social media right. uh, or put it out on your Facebook page. And um, 
that actually was not that was not taken so well by people enough so that they overturned the ban right on ballot selfies <sighs> why is this important to people <laughs> If I take a selfie, it's uh, the the little sticker you get afterwards. It says I voted. I voted. I voted. Yeah. I, you know, and I think what they're what they're worried about. I mean, from what this article says, what they're worried about is they're worried about people being influenced by outside sources before they get to the uh ballot, before they get to vote, right? So, if people say if people that are influencing others say, Hey, I voted for all of these guys and you show the actual ballot and you know, you give them the names and, and you know, like all the little circles are filled in or, or however you do your balloting. Um, then that might cause issues with voter fraud. Yeah. I still don't get it. It's weak though. It's super weak. Such a straw man argument. Like it's just, yeah. yeah. There are so many uneducated voters out there to begin with that if they really think that social media is going to sway someone's decision to vote Democratic or Republican or Independent or mm-hmm. that something is going to influence someone's decision before they go to the polls that they saw, you know, Grandma Margaret posted a picture of herself next to her ballot and, oh, I'm not voting for them because Grandma did. I mean, did that does that really happen? <laughs> Wait, what grandma's taking selfies? <laughs> hey, that, there are cool grandmas out there. I don't I know swear. them. I don't know them, though. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, oh, I don't no, know. Grandma Margaret is the one grandma that goes Margaret. on your Facebook page and says, Hi, Pat, oh, can you geez. call me, please? Oh, oh That's right. grandma. Grandma, just send a text. Do something. <laughs> just call me. Leave a message. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. If you need to take a selfie of your vote, though, that's kind of weird. Well, people take selfies of a whole lot. I'm not. I'm not saying questionable things. I'm not saying it's illegal, mind you. Nor should it be. No, that's your that's your right to be able to kind of you know free speech and all that kind of jazz. That's cool. That's but, actually you know it's it's and this is kind of a more serious topic, but it's kind of that con- like that taboo thing where you're not supposed to talk about who you voted for because mm-hmm. you might upset somebody. Right. Well, I mean, politics just just in general. I mean, I suppose, it's, but it's divisive. You don't yeah, want. I, I know. Erlina just said, well, "Aren't ballots supposed to be private?" Yes, but it's your ballot. It's your ballot, it's, and if yeah, you want right. to tell everybody who you voted for by what you did, it's I, one person's publishing on social media. As long as you're not, um, I think the only way that it would be illegal is if you were, if if it wasn't a selfie. Number one, if it, if you were taking a picture of somebody else, right. And also, uh, without their permission, and maybe using that to to mock them or something. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Then I think I don't. people would have to step in and say, you're a bad person. Give this guy money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I just, I, I don't think that they really had a good reason why this was, this was banned in the first place. So it all oh. becomes overturned after people complained. Right. Well, it's, it's um, very silly. Yeah. And then, I mean, the actual article became effective. Well, the, the, the ban came effective on July 1st based on the contention that a ban would prevent vote bullying and voter coercion while maintaining the elect the integrity of the electoral process and the secrecy of vote of voters ballots. But I feel like it's my right as a voter to, to decide People, if I want to demonstrate. It well, and, and, you know, you're going to use social media no matter what to if you want to promote something. Right. If, you know, elected officials among those. So you're going to say, hey, vote for so-and-so because I'm going to, if you're really that into it, you're going to say that. And somehow that's not wrong, but taking a selfie with your, uh, I don't know, taking a selfie at the polls is kind of weird, though. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's just me. I agree. So, so I'm going so to have another Reese's pumpkin. You could have another Reese's <laughs> Peter Peter pumpkin. Peter butter pumpkin. Peter butter pumpkin. Uh, so while while you're talking about di- that, diabetes uh, and a rapper. <laughs> mm. uh, Donald Trump made the news again. This time in Time Magazine's uh, Time dot com, um, and uh, this is the best because um, Iowa, the state mm-hmm. of Iowa, mm-hmm. is one of the biggest places in the country to uh, to gain support for your campaign. Mm-hmm. They, their electoral votes are one of the most in the country. They have a lot of pull. You need to know that you don't want us to piss off the people in Iowa. Mm-mm. Well, 
Donald Trump likes to piss off everybody. Right. So he manages to piss off a whole bunch of people by uh, insulting people who like corn. Because here's and here's the, the tweet, the actual tweet has that has now been deleted. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Ben Carson is now leading the polls in Iowa. Too much Monsanto in the corn creates issues in the brain. Right. This was actually a retweet. Right. So this is a retweet from the Trump campaign. Somebody sent this in to him and they retweeted it. Yeah. And Monsanto, just for those guys that, that don't know, it's a company that deals with uh, farmers mainly yeah. and does like the GMO stuff, the genetically modified uh, stuff. So they're saying basically gem genetically modified corn. Is it bad for the brain? Is that why Iowa is not saying that Trump is the best guy ever? Mm hmm. And then uh, the then Trump. Under his name, it was retweeted or retweeted <laughs> under, under his name on Twitter. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and that uh, that did not sit well with some people. No, and in true Donald Trump form, he blamed a young intern for the retweet and mm -hmm. says that the the young intern who actually did a retweet apologizes. Now, I don't mind. So let's talk a little bit about Trump and about his stuff, because he insults pretty much everybody. Yeah. Equal opportunity insulter. Right. And um, something like this really does kind of um, uh, piss me off a little bit, because with any good. With any good campaign, what you should be doing is you should be uh, what they call punching up. Same thing in comedy, right? You, yeah. you always punch up. You never punch down. Don't punch down on like. Iowans. That's horrible. <laughs> it's going to be really, really bad. That is never going to go well for you no. ever. Uh, if you punch up, you know, Ben Carson, that's a punch up. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you're trying to get at him or or Hillary or or anybody else or, you know, anybody on Fox News or or like taking on a country. Sure. Why not? You're yeah. punching up at that point. Yeah. Um, but but Iowans like people like an entire people. That's that's bad news. <laughs> The thing about it, though, Pat, is that he has insulted people a whole lot worse personally mm -hmm. oh, yeah. than this and has not apologized for it. Well, yeah, like women, women, Mexicans, yeah. um, well, illegal immigrants for sure. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. Mexicans in particular mm -hmm. um, and talking about all, you know, wanting to. Um, wanting to close and ban mosques in the United States if he becomes president. I There is so much that he has said to actually alienate a whole subset of people and not apologize for it. True, true. And so I, I'm, I find the reason I pulled this story in, in particular was to show that maybe he is actually caring a little bit about winning this campaign. Because if you piss off the people of Iowa who don't want to vote for you, mm -hmm. You don't have a presidency. You don't have a campaign. You don't get the nomination. Right. And that's because, so, and for those guys that don't know, um, Iowa is one of the first states that, that goes through the, the process. So, I mean, they, they vote for the candidates for the Republican Party, and um, in the, they're one of the first primary states. Yeah. And, and so you, you have Iowa, you have New Hampshire, mm -hmm. uh, and I think those are the first two, and then from there it kind of goes through. So you don't, you don't want to make... You don't want to start off on the wrong foot with those guys, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, the the thing that I will say about uh, Donald Trump is is that um, I watched he was on the Today Show today, and in this town hall format, right? And it was I find it really interesting. Like every time he a answers people's questions about anything, he immediately talks about himself and uh, something about polls. And something about, uh, hey, thanks a lot for you know asking me this question about uh, about women. Uh, I'm polling great with women. I'm I'm fantastic with all the women. I'm polling wonderful numbers with those guys. I'm I mean I'm blowing away all the guys out there, but the women are also coming along with me. Uh, but that's definitely something that I want to talk more about. But but and he he does this thing where he talks about himself and about his poll numbers and never actually answers the question with any kind of substantive uh thing i, right. th I just think it's funny right well it's it's he, he's trying to prove his worth in that respect <laughs> through, through the polls you know? 
Right. Not through his ideas, but just through the polls, just through his popularity. And I think that that's funny. No matter what, no matter what you think about uh, Donald Trump, he is definitely a personality that is all about the hype. So, yes. So there. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. this next story that you pulled, I saw this and kind of my my brain is in melt mode. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, let me let me roll you through this a little bit. Okay. So uh, in Oregon, there's a place called Portland. I've been there recently. Actually, it's a beautiful town. Uh, there was a naked burglar who hopped into a Portland, Oregon couple's bed in the middle of the night, wound up fleeing down the street after a male after the male victim woke up and chased him with a gun, firing three shots, police said. There's more to this story. There is more to this. There's a lot more to the story. So uh, police say that Dean, what's his name, broke into a Portland home around three o'clock in the morning, gathered items of value and then stripped naked. Climbed into a bed with a man and a woman and then kissed the man. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't know what was going on. So the, so the victim woke up and the suspect, the naked dude, was sitting on top of him holding a knife. The, There's so much wrong with this. I know. The victim pushed the suspect off of him as the, as the victim retrieved his handgun. And began giving the suspect commands to leave him alone. Stop. Stop it. To oh get gosh. off of me naked with a knife. Kissing me <laughs> on the kissing me on the cheek or whatever. I actually it doesn't say if it kissed him on the cheek or where. But it's like Well so you can so, guess what his intention was if he got into the if he broke into this couple's right. house, took off all his clothes and got in bed with them. Yeah. It's like, come on, dude. Like there's something seriously wrong here. And then there's the victim who's like so pissed off that he and scared out of his mind that he's firing a weapon right at this this intruder i oh I, my gosh. i think it's hilarious i mean it's like the guy the guy broke into the guy, other guy's house and then robbed him blind but before leaving he's like okay i'm done with my job now it's time for snuggles and went in and hopped into the, the couple's bed and kissed the dude good night good night night dad <laughs> That's actually one of my one of my biggest fears in life is to be awoken by someone coming into my house. You know, thanks for making me paranoid now. Right. It's like that is one of my biggest fears, because when I I have I do have problems sleeping and when I do sleep really well, it's, you know, that kind of weird feeling when you wake up and you're like, dude, I had no awareness of anything that was going on around me. And that's kind of freaky. Right. Right. Oh. Uh, you know what it actually was, though? Mm-hmm. The guy was over at uh, the other guy's house looking for his 50 pounds of pot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Where's my pot, damn it? <laughs> Where's my pot? All right. Uh, last story of the news today. It is a very sad day for everybody who loves bacon products. I think the internet just died a little bit. <laughs> the inside. internet died on the inside just a little bit. Uh, The World Health Organization, the WHO, has deemed that processed meats such as bacon, sausages, and hot dogs cause cancer. And we'll take a moment of silence to mourn all those bacon lovers out there. So this conclusion puts processed meats in the same category of cancer risk as tobacco smoking Mm -hmm. and asbestos. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it... Of course, they go on to say that it doesn't mean that they're equally as dangerous, obviously, but the more meat you eat, the more processed meats you eat, the more red meat you eat, the more you, uh, the more chance you have to, uh, to get cancer. So So how long is it going to be until we get another, another article, another internet breaking story about how this is actually untrue? Because this is what happens with foods. Don't eat eggs. Eggs are bad for you. Only eat whites, uh, you know, or the egg whites right. and don't eat the yolks. Oh, by the way, you should be eating more yolks. And it's like that. That's this is what happens. Mm-hmm. But is. we all know our diets are shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is definitely. I mean, I've had uh, two of these Reese's peanut butter pumpkins already. Might just, it's just the last 45 good. minutes or whatever. It's been half hour. Mm, they're so good, though. Got, I've got one more that I can have. It's at the desk right now. It'll got be it. done before the end of this podcast. <laughs> probably, you watch. I'll probably do it during the music. 
the end. Probably. By the way, stay stay for the music. It's really good. Yeah, music's really good. Oh, too. oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But this is the thing. We will go through this, and we all. I, I mean, I, I will stand behind this one hundred percent. We our diets are shit in the United States. We mm-hmm. know this. Mm-hmm. We know it is. Um, you know, everything in moderation is what we need to do in order to make sure that you know no issues. Because you can see the guy who smokes three packs a day, eats a lot of red meat, yep. um, lives to 90. And then yep. there's the healthy young. <laughs> and then he says, and then he says, you know, everybody asks, what's your secret to long life? And he says, uh, you know, a stick of meat with meat on it. I don't know. And, uh, you know, a pack of Winston's no filters, whatever it is. That's all you need in life. Great gramps. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for your great, uh, great. Yeah. Observation. Mm hmm. Well, all of these people who are uh, on the Atkins diet just cried a little inside today. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> I may have lost 70 pounds, but I'm more risk for can't. Well, OK. Yeah, we kind of need that. Don't right. eat too much shit. I mean, just don't. <laughs> don't eat too much shit. Yeah. Sage words. True. Sage words. All right, let's uh, let's get off this depressing topic and go to the border battle. Ah, yes, it's time for the border battle where I treat Jules with a quiz that she has no idea what the heck it's about until we actually talk about it. This is the best times. We love these times. This is the best times, and again, uh, so it could be anything, right? It could be. Uh, I think the first time. Uh, we did this. It was where is this news coming from? Last week was real or fake with uh, uh, featuring pumpkin spice, and then this week it's gonna actually be uh, uh, Halloween costumes, real Ooh. or fake? Really? Real? Yeah. Real, this is cool. Real or fake Halloween costumes? And by by real or fake, I mean these are sold in the stores. I mean, obviously, you could probably make your own or whatever. But these are sold in stores somewhere. Like you go to the mall and you find that pop up store like the, that was in the empty one yeah, and yeah, they sell them in those plastic bags. Or like the Party City or, you know, wherever. Right? Okay. So here we go Toilet Adult Mask. Real or fake? Toilet Adult Mask. Yeah. So your mask would be a, a toilet. toilet. A, a toilet. A toilet. Like a, For a mask. I say fake oh no that's real what <laughs> that's real no <laughs> that's totally real it's, it's, it's you uh your face becomes the back of the 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 tank right so yeah. you're not actually in the bowl your your face is your the face tank is the tank where's the, the seat the right underneath your chin <laughs> oh gosh it's horrible. <laughs> it's terrible it's horrible uh okay here we go sexy potato Okay, so sexy potato. It'd be like Miss Mrs. Potato Head's. Uh, say true, fake, real? No, real. it's fake. It's fake. <laughs> I don't know what you did on that one, but it's fake. That one's fake. Oh. It was just. It was just like really sexy legs with a with a potato <laughs> on the picture. All right, here we go. Rake face. Rake. Like- Face like a rake, like you uh, like, rake a, like a leaf rake. Yeah, rake face. I'm gonna say fake. You are correct. That is okay. I got one right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do yeah, doo doo head mask. Doo doo head looks uh, hey, okay. I'm gonna say real because of the poop emoji. Yeah, and it looks like the poop emoji. I got it. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Middle finger costume, real oh. or fake? Middle finger costume. Hmm. This one fake. It's oh, real. Shut up. It's real. So the you, you the face comes out of like the 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 top uh part of the finger and then and then the, the finger rest comes at the top of your head? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your head uh is like the middle finger part and then the the hand part is like around your waist essentially. It's a terrible costume. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, more Halloween costumes, real or fake? And we'll go with man stuck at mall with wife. Is this real or fake? Oh, no. 
<laughs> I don't know how you would make that into a costume man's, except for like a guy st- sitting on a chair like this, the size they fake. So what are you fake? You're yeah. correct. That I didn't is know how they fake it. They, they, uh, the, uh, the picture was a guy holding several bags and looking bored. <laughs> it's, no, you had to give the guy the purse. That's how it works. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's and like a purse, like kind of, you know, tucked in your arm somewhere where you're not really holding it like mm-hmm. by the straps or anything like that. You're holding it like in your arm, like under your arm. I am. I'm this is l- laborious type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Next costume is snake charmer with snake sticking its head out of the zipper of the pants. Is that real or fake? I'm going to say real. You are correct. Uh, <laughs> and it is a python that's coming out. It is uh, It is probably about uh, two and a half, three feet long. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Next costume is cold girlfriend. Real or fake? Okay. So that could mean a couple of different things. It could mean she's actually cold. That is what, that mean- is what we're talking about. Okay, okay, or it's that she's kind of a stick in the mud. No, um, old girlfriend. Fake? You are correct. It's okay. fake. How but would the, you make that? <laughs> it was just the. It was just a, a woman standing with like um, a jacket over her shoulders, like a, a man's. Oh, sport like coat. I'm cold. Right, Got it. Right. All right. Lion slaying dentist. Oh no! Lion slaying dentist is that real or fake? No, that sucks. If that's real, is that it, sucks. is it real or fake? It's real. It is real. Lion oh, slaying God, dentist is real. Fired. Another another great Minnesota uh, thing for you. All right, dentist slaying lion, real or fake? Ooh, these are good, Pat. Mm-hmm. real that is real yes! actually it was, it was a reaction to uh the lion slaying dentist and PETA actually put that out okay so uh, that uh, for sense. like 130 bucks or so. i mean they're raking it in for that it's great uh all right we're gonna go into a bunch of sexy ones sexy costumes now we had the sexy potato i thought i'd throw that at the beginning because it was ridiculous even though you got it wrong <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to do mrs potato head or something so so, sexy pizza rat. I know that is real. Yeah, that is real. I saw that. Right. Sexy corn cob. Fake. No, that's what? real. Sexy corn cob is real. No way. Sexy Steven. Sexy Steven. Yes, you get a Steven mask and a, uh, and a sexy made outfit. Who's Steven? I don't understand. Uh, I, so I don't know. We'll say real. <laughs> That's fake. I don't know who this is. <laughs> exactly. It was just this guy. It was just a, like a, it was a Photoshop deal. Steven Tyler or something? I know. No, it's just sexy Steven. It, it all, all makes sense here in a minute. I swear, right. I swear it will. All okay. right. Sexy hamburger. Oh, gosh. Really? Um, real or fake? Fake, fake. fake. Oh. No, it's real. What? Sexy hamburger is so real. It's basically it's a dress that's like hamburger uh stuff. I don't I don't know exactly what it is. Anyway, okay, last one is an actual duck. Real? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, an actual duck. I mean it's like a duck. That's a duck. Oh <laughs> was, I think I failed this that one. Was, that was not good. I think you lose. <laughs> you lose! Congratulations! All right, really so good, all of those fake ones were actually done by uh, by this guy on the internet called Jeff Wysoski. Um, he was he's had some other internet pranks that he's done, including pleated jeans. Um, but he he uh, did up all this fake signage in like a party city type of thing. So it was yeah. like where he had the picture, he photoshopped all the stuff, mm-hmm. and and actually placed these into a store as part of a prank so like sexy potato uh sexy steven there was also a missing steven one where it was ripped out i mean it was he was very creative very cool very fun so i thought i'd throw him in there that Um, is great yeah it was really cool really cool to see that and and uh i think i can throw links into the show notes on that one as well so 
look out for it. But that was uh, that was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that one was fun. Sexy Steven. I don't know there, who he is. <laughs> there was also there was also a costume named just named Jeff. Jeff. Just, it's like this guy. I want to be Jeff for Halloween. And it was like it was like two ninety nine. And it's like, no, seriously, don't buy this. This is the worst costume ever. It's just Jeff. <laughs> so that's yeah, great. That was good. Uh, okay. Now, where are we? Oh yeah, I know where we are. We're we're at the end of the show. We are. Oh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, but that means that uh, Jules, you're gonna tell people how they can find us, right? I will do that. You okay. can find us uh, on email. We got an email address called the Mondays Show at gmail dot com. The Mondays Show at gmail. Right. Um, our website address signalsmedia dot com slash Mondays. Mm-hmm. And best way to get in touch with us is via Twitter. You can yep. find Pat Pat Crane with a K. You can find me Jules RPG. Right, and we're also on. Uh, so we uh, record this show on Twitch uh, Twitch TV slash Zug Z H U G. Um, that's my gamer name. Yay. Um, Yay. Or you can check us out on, if you want to check us out live or on recorded versions, you can find us at alphageekradio.com as well. Right? Right. Uh, and now, anything else? Anything? What's going on this week? So next week we won't have a show. Right. And I, the reason is because I have to work on Monday before we go to BlizzCon. Well, and it's BlizzCon prep week, so it's kind of a busy time. The following Monday, we also probably will not have a show. We may have a show, but probably not because I will still be in California. So we'll have to figure that one out. Yeah, so we might be off for a couple weeks, but uh, we'll come back. We promise. We promise we will. Uh, And it'll give you a chance to listen to all of these uh, wonderful tunes that we have on the show uh, again and, and many, many times. How's that? And you're going to want to listen to this next one many, many times, I, I swear. Because we've got this juicy piece of music coming for you. It's a soul rock band uh, called Kennan Moving Company. And this is their third single as a part of a series of unreleased music leading up to their upcoming EP. Still not quite sure when that's coming out, but it's, but it's cool. So I've heard all three of these uh, singles. They're all incredible. This one is really great. Uh, and I've listened to their uh, previous EP as well, uh, which was called No Fun, which came out last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's so cool. It's so cool. So we're going to listen to Kennan Moving Company, and the track is Charades. And once again, all these songs were done with the, uh, with the, with the artist's blessing. And of course, all the links are going to be in the show notes. And everywhere that we put this show, it's going to happen. So please make sure to look at the show notes and click on them and uh, find them online, wherever they are. Once again, here we go with Charades, Kennan Moving Company. We'll see you next time on A Case of the Mondays. Bye, guys.
my dog. <laughs> this podcast is a part of the Signals Media All Star Network. For more information on this and other fine shows, go to signalsmedia.com. It's okay to stick our stuff in your ears. Really? Darla, you can't have any of my pumpkins!